Hello, everyone. Welcome to Comet PFT community call. Uh, we have a pretty lightweight agenda today, uh, two broad topics, team updates, and uh, we're going to touch a bit on PBTS. Uh, this is a topic we covered before, but it came up again. Uh, if there's other things that you don't see covered here and you would like us to chat about, please let me know already so I can put it here and uh, we know to make time for it. Since it's a pretty light agenda, we will have time, pretty sure. Okay, uh, so let's get it started. We the, the team has been doing a bit of work to decide on our priorities for Q3. It was actually pretty uh, easy to decide on the priorities because uh, we are uh, continuing the work we started in Q2. Uh, if you go to the project board, you will see there a lot of good stuff that has happened in Q2 and Q3 will basically be ex an extension on that. We're gonna uh, focus primarily on bandwidth and storage improvements. And uh, if you read, actually we have, a, we have a blog post from the beginning of Q2 where we give a bit of detail on our these two problems and uh, if you if there's curiosity around them we can also go into detail here on 038 and mitigating the impact of vote extension I, who who would be best from the team to talk about it guess lazaro or sergio lazaro, yeah. lazaro probably yes thank you yeah uh for 038 in the 038 QA, we verify that both extensions might increase a lot the bandwidth usage and impact the consensus. Um, because the vocal extensions are essentially, we are just giving the, the applications a, a, a way of gossip information, right? And it depends on the application and how much information they're going to put there. We cannot save, um, we cannot force them to use um, a small amount of. Uh, of data, but if they put a lot of data, then consensus is going to have a big hit. Because of that, we are going to look into how we can save memory, memory uh, save bandwidth on other communication. Since we don't have any control over the vote extensions themselves, we have to try to cut costs on the block by propagation and uh, um, amplification of votes and transactions. So that's what we are targeting for Q3, uh, looking to those problems. So we're not really trying to reduce this, the bandwidth used by uh, vote extensions. We are trying to reduce other bandwidth to make vote extensions, to enable uses of vote extensions. Yeah, I would like to so totally agree. And I would like to, to underline uh, two key things that uh, Lazaro said, which is, our current uh, understanding is that the hit, the performance hit of big board extensions are due to amplification. The fact that our current gossip delivers the same vote many times. When it used to be a, a small vote, it's like, you know, it's um, acceptable. But now if you have 32K, for instance, of, uh, of data piggyback to that vote that is amplified, then basically that's what's causing the hit. And as, as Lazaro said, we're gonna try to tackle, among other things, we're gonna try to tackle to reduce the amplification of votes. By the way, there is a, there is a, one in, incremental improvement that we did with um with a um, small hackathon with uh, with Ethan, Ethan, with Bucky, with uh, CEO, which is already like reducing it a, a, a bit. You, you might want, if you want more, more information, I can actually provide you with the PR. And this is actually landed already for 39. This is going to happen in 039. What was the improvement? Just out of curiosity, uh, I cannot give you the numbers now. But we we did um, we did some tests in a 200 node test, and they they were um, they made us salivate. Uh, no, no, I meant like I can, what I can give you. Let me let me pull what? up. So so in order not to block the the meeting, let me pull up the PR, and you if you go to the description, you will oh. see the the measurements. Cool. Bear with me. But at the high level, we can still explain what it was. There were two, right? The sleep and the need need uh, uh, has block part. Okay. Yeah, that's it. We we were that... giving brief we were giving giving brief space to the gossip to basically make the has block part, which is introduced by the, that PR and the existing has vote, some breathing space so that it actually that can be effective. 
that's basically the the idea that but this is just preliminary uh -huh. this is just the first like like the the, the small uh, appetizer yeah. of everything that's coming in this quarter which uh, uh adi was actually describing as our priorities right. this is just the first step the first step of a huge staircase yeah i'm familiar with the please back off and that improvement nice nice job All right, should we cover anything about 039? I think we mentioned it not last time, but before, and we have a very rough release plan. Uh, we've mentioned some other changes that are slated for V039. The data companion, we're also slating that. Uh, this, we're still pending some input uh, in, on, a, on the locking behavior. We know that uh, DYDX and Volcani team, both of them mentioned it. I think Marco also, that's probably why I put uh, uh, the name here. And there were a couple of, there were multiple ways in which we can improve the locking behavior, but uh, the short version uh, or the short kind of status here is that we're not really decided yet on what we will do as part of 039. So the more significant things of 039 will be the data companion, most likely uh, to be decided still, uh, proto and RPC versioning, most likely. And what is for sure is the bandwidth improvements that we already mentioned. So that's a 039 uh, status. Did I miss anything, Dane? Or... I think that's everything. All right. Are there other questions on uh, on uh, anything the team is doing at the moment on zero thirty eight or upcoming plans with zero thirty nine? Anything people would like in particular to see? Okay, since Blas is not here. Is it worth uh, just reiterating for folks that like we do have uh, 038 RC1 out um, that people can test out. And we also cut 03429 and 0372 uh, in the last week. And the 03429 and 0372 were to mitigate some what we consider to be low severity security issues. Uh, I, from what Ali was uh, saying to me earlier or saying to the team earlier was that some validators were experiencing some issues with the dump consensus state endpoint. And we introduced a fix for this in both 03.4.29 and 03.7.2. Um, so if, if folks would like to upgrade to those versions, we'd recommend that. Again, the, the security issues are low severity, um, but some people may be affected by them. Cool. All right, since Blas is not here, this will be a pretty short discussion uh, about PBTS. We already covered it once and we didn't get a lot of feedback back then. Uh, the question was around two months ago when I asked if anyone has particular interest in PBTS. Uh, at that point, there was no one in the community call, nor on Slack. Uh, now a team came up. Uh, there's a lot of related work on it. Uh, there's this uh, fork of Comet that, uh, that, okay, fork of Tendermint actually, that actually reverted changes uh, to uh, the using of BLS. So that's pretty interesting uh, that we should probably investigate before we commit to bringing uh, signature aggregation in, in Comet. Uh, then this is something that depends on, uh, on PPTS uh, that the SDK team has been mentioning uh, recently, uh, roughly a month and a bit ago. If I remember correctly, this depends on DPTS. Yeah, actually there, this is a comment from you guys. Uh, whether yeah the, the basic question is whether this is this is to any extent uh, urgent or should we consider prioritizing if so it will affect how we're going to think about uh ppts have any insights sorry was that a question for me any insights into it was the, yes, um, I'm just wondering if the issue that I was talking about previously that seems to depend on uh, PPTS. Um, mm -hmm. I'm curious if you have any insights whether this is this is a, a priority, should it be anytime soon? Anything oh. that could help us? Um, I would not say this is super high priority in, in, the, grand, in the grand scheme of things. Cool. 
Okay. Uh, so what we have so far then is we know that some teams are trying to do some bridging efforts and they, uh, in that context, they're implementing BLS, uh, a BLS based approach that is signature aggregation. In order to do signature aggregation, they would need PBTS. And that's what brings us to discussing PBTS today. Should have said that from the beginning, apologies. Uh, and there's some concerns about it. I'm curious if anyone in the call has any insights uh, into any of this. For the Comet team, it is not a huge lift because part of the work was done as part of uh, the, the retracted version V036. There's, uh, there's specs and I think an implementation as well. Daniel, feel free. okay, I see Sergio nodding. I see Daniel nodding, <laughs> nice. So there's both specs and implementations. It's, it's, it's relatively low hanging fruit for us to bring it into mainline if we see clear signals that this will benefit concrete users. There yeah, is one like risk add, with it. I would, I yeah. would like to add that is, a, I mean, I, I, you read my mind when you said it's a lot of hanging fruit in terms of the work is done, it's just about backporting or forward porting. And also this kind of stuff, We that's what we've been doing massively in the last six to nine months. So we know very well as a team how to, um, how to plan and execute on them in a, in a precise way, so. Excellent. Daniel, you wanna add anything? I guess you might be the only other person who has a bit of context on this, but maybe if covered it. No, no, not really. I think, uh, the, yeah, the, the implementation, re-implementing that on the new cost base that was reverted can be a little longer than, than yeah, just it's not, trivial but the, the part of the specification and and also now we are able to run large test nets tests so we can also explore some situations that we were not able i mean practical situations just to see the the, the kind of risk is that we are adding to to comment some synchronous assumptions there is this this content on the link below so essentially i assume the clocks are synchronized and back back on the is the next one uh, and back on the the previous experiment to realize that some nodes have very skewed clocks i don't know exactly why on the production network so this is something uh, operators need to keep uh, to have in mind this is the second part of the proposal the second assumption of this bounded message delays is actually not really complex to achieve because you can always put a very large delay on that so yeah i think we now have the ability to to do a qa in a more proper way than we were before mm -hmm. regarding we have some problems with recall sergio with the uh when you recover from crashes yeah replay the, the same replay. the same we're having today <laughs> yeah. exactly but uh, essentially i think here mainly the idea is to understand whether aggregating votes is important and just for the big contest here, we can only aggregate votes if the timestamps on the votes are the same, or if you remove the timestamp from the, the the content that is signed on a vote. So that's the use of this. Daniel, I have a, a question for you, just thinking of dependencies, okay, and, and implications. Uh, like the, I remember the PBTS, the way it was implemented in O36, as it is, as is, is not like it's just basically putting this new way of, of doing the timestamps, but it was not touching the block format, was it? It was just kind, no. kind of like a preparation, right? It's like this is kind of a prerequisite for anything you want to do, anything else you want to do, right? Yeah, we, we changed the use of the, the timestamp in vote message, proposed message, and the way we computed the timestamp of the block. Exactly. So we didn't need to add any new fields, we just replaced the way change the way we compute. So, so an external, like an ex, like an external party, like um, um, a block expert, like mint scan, for instance, in principle wouldn't even notice that this is going on, right? Because the formats are the same, it's just the way it is calculated, right? Well, there is a small difference here because before the times, so now the, now the B, B, BFT time, essentially the timestamp of a block is the timestamp of the pre-votes of the previous height, right? Now the timestamp of a block is more so with PBTS, is it's closer to the real time at which the, exactly. the block was proposed. So it so will be value, more accurate. Yeah, exactly. The value would be slightly different, but it would just still be the same. The same. I mean, from somebody that is external to that, you wouldn't even notice, I believe. Yeah. And also, yeah. keep me honest. All the if you look into the votes of a of a block, all votes would have exactly the same timestamp, right? Now exactly. with this, just yeah. just like 
you know. Yeah. Uh, so my so, question is, so 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 this is something that what we need to be need to be also clear is that PBTS to me is like something we need for other things. Like uh, Adi was mentioning here, um, BLS. Do, do you, were you mentioning BLS, Adi? Yes. Yeah. So for BLS and stuff that you know, and 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 that's a question to Daniel, who knows this best, is that we needed to do BLS and and these kind of things. At that point, would the block uh, structure need to be changed at some point? Because I'm asking this because that means that you know that there is an ongoing discussion on, on how to tackle that, how to tackle soft upgrades, etc. And so, like you know, to see if they, they depend on each other or something in order in, in order to properly plan this. Yes, it will affect the block structure and the headers, uh, the the signature the signature verification algorithms. It will affect light, IBC light clients. It will have pretty drastic implications at the, at the ecosystem level. Yeah, I think also there is some performance in consideration. Should be, should be. We need to measure that. So we, we uh, essentially, if you assume that all the the, for instance, all the validator signal blocks BLS can be very fast. But if you have different sets, since you have to compute multiple aggregated public keys this might not be ideal. So there are some performance trade-offs to consider, but reply your question, like I'd say, we are going to, so that the blocks format will change if you would aggregate signatures of pre-commits, yeah. Yeah, to me, it seems like the upgrade, you know, the sub-upgrade thing will probably need to be prioritized rather sooner than later. No, I know not in Q3, but, you know, not far later, I'd say. Cool. So uh, since we don't have the, the composable team to also give us a bit more insights or to, to champion the need for this, we, we can give them another option with the next community call and we can finish in record time today. Uh, the team is kind of uh, all, uh, all hands on back with doing performance improvements and we just finished planning. So uh, not much other things happening. Are there uh, other other topics that anyone else would like to to cover, or everyone okay to to wrap it up earlier? All right, thanks uh, thanks everyone for your time and attention, and enjoy your day. See you next time. Thank you guys. Cheers. Thanks everyone. Ciao.